the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We gather together as a parish family spiritually to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Jesus is alive, the very present in our midst, and manifests himself as the Good Shepherd. As we gather today, we, we are so delighted to be joined by other guests throughout the country and throughout the world. We hope that you feel very welcome here at St. Mary's, and we welcome in a special way our guest of other faith traditions. You honor us with your presence. We remind you as always, under this roof, we are all one family, children of the same God, sisters and brothers to one another. And so now, as God's children, let us pause for a moment to call to mind our sinfulness and let us ask God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, your love for us is far greater than we could ever imagine or ever hope for. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to love one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body, with your blood, to nourish us on our journey. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sin, and bring us to everlasting love.
Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, what are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call, he testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accept his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep. But you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to begin by talking to my friends in the second grade. I know today was supposed to be, this weekend was supposed to be First Communion Day, and you're going to receive Eucharist for the first time. And I know that you are very disappointed because I know how much you have been looking forward to this day. I'm so sorry that it could not happen this weekend. 
but I assure you that it will happen. And when it does happen, it will be a wonderful, wonderful celebration. As I've told many of you before, and I've told the old brothers and sisters, First Eucharist Day is my favorite day of the year. And I can't wait. And I'm looking forward to seeing some of you as we have a Zoom meeting with our first Eucharist kids this weekend. So I look forward to seeing you and we're going to talk about First Communion and uh, what a joyful celebration that's going to be. The late Clarence Jordan, author, New Testament scholar, and one of the founders of Habitat for Humanity writes, on the morning of resurrection, God puts life in the present tense. Not in the future. He gave not a promise, but a presence. Not a hope for the future, but power for the present. Not so much the assurance that we shall live someday, but that he is risen today. The proof that God raised Jesus from the dead is not the empty tomb but the full hearts of his transformed disciples. The crowning evidence that he lives is not a vacant grave, but a spirit-filled fellowship, not a rolled away stone, but the carried away church. Jesus is alive and in our midst among us. The risen Christ is in our midst in the love of family and in the care of doctors, nurses, and healthcare providers, in the bravery of those who are putting their, their lives on the front line in order to see us through to the other side, in the support of this incredible parish family, in the commitment, despite tremendous obstacles of teachers and counselors. Yes, Jesus Christ is alive today and ministering to us as a good shepherd in his risen body. As you all know, these past few weeks have been very, very difficult. We wonder where we're going to go next after weeks of social distancing, working from home or not working at all, struggling to put meals together from what groceries we can get trying to maintain our lives as the things we rely on become scarcer and scarcer. Who do we listen to when politics collides with science? When every small light of optimism is darkened by ominous clouds? When we yearn for normalcy and have no idea what normal will be? Yes, it has been a difficult and a trying time. A very different Easter season from any we have celebrated before. But columnist Yvonne Abraham, writing in the Boston Globe, wonders if this Easter season, the Easter season that we are now living through, could be beginning of something extraordinary. She pondered. What would the world be like if the things that have become so important to us during this pandemic remain so? How would our lives look if our values and our priorities were frozen right here? If we were always as kind to each other and as worried about the world as we are today? We would do just about everything differently. We'd pay teachers, Lessons be upon them as much as hedge funders. Our hands would always be so clean that we could eat off of them. We'd have more respect and money for low wage workers who deliver our basic needs, grocery store clerks, and others who work to bring food to our tables, drivers who keep bringing packages to doors of the luckiest among us, trash haulers and maintenance workers and building cleaners and others who put themselves at risk to protect us. We'd really see the folks who, who work at restaurants, most of them for lousy money, and insist that they earn wages that mask 
match their dignity, and we would leave bigger tips. We would spend money less on things that serve no purpose except to signal, signal status. Care less about impressing strangers. Make more of what will last. We would waste less, period. We spend more time with family and friends and be more keenly aware of our massive good fortune to have them, especially the older ones. We would hug longer and linger in each other's presence. We would love our neighbor. Yes, even that one. We would work together to make those who are alone feel less so. We would be more grateful for all we have and more outraged at what others do not have. We would, we will be happier on the other side of this if we In the most difficult challenges of our lives, COVID-19 included, Christ the Good Shepherd speaks amid the turmoil and fear. If we listen with open hearts, we can hear Christ speaking in those small acts of kindness, forgiveness, and justice that eventually get us beyond those obstacles. In today's gospel, Jesus calls himself the gate, the entryway for our God, the passage through which we step from the reality of our imperfect, incomplete world to the reality of the perfect holiness of God. May we learn the lessons of compassion and justice that these demanding days are teaching us. May we resolve to bring our new creation of humanity into every Easter season to come. The words of the prophet Isaiah expressed in the hymn by David Haas resounded in my heart again and again as I reflected upon the scripture readings this week. Like a shepherd, I will feed you. I will gather you with care. I will lead you and fold you close to my heart. We will run and not grow weary, for our God will be our strength. And we will fly like the eagle. We will rise again. I am strength to the weary, to the weak, I am your light. Though the young may grow weary, I will be their hope. Lift up your eyes and see who made the stars. I lead you, and I know you, and I call you each by name. Fear not, I am with you. I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I'll hold you with my hand. We will run and not grow weary. For our God will be our strength. And we will fly like, it, like the eagle. We will rise again. One God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of all ages, God from God, light from light, to God from true God. Begotten not made unsubstantial to the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, 
Spirit was in on the Virgin Mary and became a man. I would say, who is crucified on the of Christ. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, that the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken from the prophets. I believe in law and holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess in baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and the Lord and the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. By grace of Jesus, God changed suffering and death to grace and life. So now let us humbly raise our voice to the one who lifts us up and makes us new creation. He responds, Lord, hear our prayer. For our call for stewardship, that we may be good stewards of the gifts that God has given us, by addressing the challenges of our parish community and by responding generously with time, talent, and treasure. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all pastors, that they may faithfully imitate Christ in accompanying the people of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, that God will give them wisdom as they develop plans to preserve the health and safety of society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will guide and inspire all scientists and medical researchers working for a cure to curtail the virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, the vulnerable, and the unemployed, that God may comfort them heal them, and provide for them and their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are burdened by separation from others because of the virus, especially our children and adults staying at home, that God may pour his graces over them and have their strength and patience renewed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are in need of healing or peace in their lives, especially members of our parish family, that God's gracious spirit will give their bodies and minds comfort and wholeness. We especially pray for Gene O'Hara, Maggie Wilkin, Philip Lynn, Robert Dastas, Mary Levine, Ginny, Scott, Ivana, Anorka, Barbara Charbonneau, Andrea Lloyd, Kate, Gail, Patrick Diggins, Joanna, Bobby Kelly, Joe, Nicole, Eddie Fitzgerald, Anita, Father Andy, and all those who have been impacted by abuse in any form. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may be brought into the eternal peace of God's presence through Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. For the victims of the coronavirus, Amy Sweetland, and Anne Monopoly, who died this weekend, and especially for Edward Egan, Barbara Harrison, Richard and Nellie Mason, Richard Mason, and Charlene Shores, whom we remember at this Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own prayers, we hold in the silence of our hearts, and those prayers of people who are written in our book of intentions and never forgotten by God. Praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We invite you to join in praying our stewardship prayer. My church is composed of people like me. I am very good it is. Though be friendly if I am. It's beautifully filled if I am not them. We drink great work if I work. My church gives many causes if I am a generous giver. We bring other people which is worship and fellowship if I invite to bring them. We be a church of glory to love. Of fearless and faith, and a church with the noble spirit, if I and make what it is, and filled with these same things. Therefore, Father God, as I dedicate myself 
to task of being all the things that I want my church to be. Amen. Our offer for him is Shepherd Me, O God.
You are indeed holy, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before Jesus was given up to death, the death he freely accepted, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his friends, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up. all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal cover, which will be poured out for you for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
not on our sin, but on the faith of your people, the church. And graciously grant a peace in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Be with your spirit. And now let us prudently offer to one another a sign of. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is Lord, you have come.
let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. If you or someone you know is struggling with being isolated or unable to go to the market or pharmacy during this difficult time, please know that there is help available. If you're experiencing food shortage, there are food donations available. We can provide resources and food pantry information if that is appropriate. If you're feeling lonely and would like to hear a friendly voice, know we are here to provide company and friendship over the phone for now and will maintain social distancing. We have grocery shoppers and errand helpers at St. Mary's to assist you. This is held confidential and we will not enter your home. Arrangements for deliveries will be made with you. Please know you are not truly alone and our parish family will do whatever is necessary to safely help you during these difficult weeks. If we can accept, assist you in any way, please call I'm grateful to all the members of our parish family who have reached out with prayers, best wishes, words of support, words of support, and offers of assistance. You are truly, truly blessed. I'm grateful to the members of our parish family who have continued to be generous financially to keep St. Mary's afloat during these stormy days. I'm awed by your generosity. If your household is still stable right now, now please help this parish stay solvent during the crisis by continuing your support of our parish offertory. Whether you use online giving, send donations through your bank, or if you drop a check in the mail, your regular support will make a huge difference at being sure we will still be here when the crisis is over. The most beneficial method for us is by a person who's making contributions through the bank in the same way bills are paid. There is no service fee and thus St. Mary's receives 100% of your donation. If you need assistance in either doing online giving or uh, working with your bank, please call the parish office and we would be glad to assist you through this process. We continue to look forward to the day when we are physically together again as a family. What an amazing celebration it will be. In the meantime, we continue to be united by our love, our faith, My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our message ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our final word of praise is go in peace to Mother and Sir.